Our gospel lesson today is the, is, uh, it continues with Jesus' encounter with and, be, and, and he's in conflict with the religious authorities over the Sabbath. This time he's invited to the Pharisees' home for Sabbath lunch. And he tells them how to choose a seat and who should have really been invited. But in so doing, he teaches us something about the kingdom of God. So we'll um, look at that today. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we welcome you to... lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Singing, David danced. Jesus. 
The first, the first lesson is from Proverbs chapter 25. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil roamers. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Hebrews chapter 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guest chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. 
And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And, when, and then, in disgrace, you will start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come up. It's party time. Okay, if you were going to have a big party, who would you invite? <laughs> Your friends, yeah. Immediately we want to, the people that are like us who we hang out with. So, I don't have any invitations today, but I have party favors. I know it says happy birthday, but this is just a, a party. You know, these ones are, are nice because they don't make any noise. Here's what Jesus says. We want to invite friends. Jesus says, invite the poor, the lame, the blind. And then he used the term crippled. We, we say disabled now. Everyone, no one else wants to invite because God likes to invite everyone. Give that, there you go. All right. So even though we are having a big party today, and we do every Sunday, believe it or not, it's a big party here, what I want you to do is invite everyone you can think of to come to our party every week, okay? Because that's what God's kingdom is, a place where everyone comes and everyone is welcome. All right? <laughs> Alexis, what is wrong? <laughs> you know what? I think it's time for a prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, repeat after me. Gracious Heavenly Father, Thank you for inviting us to your kingdom. It is a party. Help us to invite everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week I was uh, just coming back from a week away. And what, one of the events that happened, one of the, the things that happened when we took this trip is that our plane was delayed in Springfield. So by the time we arrived in Denver, we had missed our connecting flight to Salt Lake City. And uh, those kinds of things happen. And of course, uh, we already had a, our day scheduled pretty tightly. We were expecting to arrive at our campground at about 11 that night. Now that it was a two to three hour delay, and we finally did arrive at 2.30 in the morning. But one of the nice things, when we got to Denver and they made our connections, they put two of us in first class. I was one of those. <laughs> so this sermon is about first class people. First class, you're the first to board. Out of my way, people. <laughs> I'm coming through. You have bigger seats, more leg room. The steward came by during that one hour flight, at least a half a dozen times, to offer me anything I wanted. All kinds of uh, drinks that were available and other treats. I kept saying no. And then she stared at me for a few seconds in one of these encounters, and I think she wanted to give me a little lecture and tell me, it's all free. You don't pay for it in first class. Finally, when she came by another time, I saw some um, roasted almonds, and I said, I'll take those. Maybe made her happy. My, uh, the person in the seat next to me did have two gin and tonics, which I thought, I have a long day. I can't afford to, uh, to do something like that. Well, it's a nice feeling as if you are a first-class person, isn't it? I remember one day I came to Rotary and I was wearing a sport coat I hadn't put on in years. It was about 30 years old. Harris Tweed and everything. And a very prominent businessman in town came up to me and he, when I was getting my lunch and he says, Dan, you look nice today. Come sit at my table. <laughs> I said, oh. And he goes, oh no, Dan, come and do that for me. And I said, well, fine. Never has asked me since, though. <laughs> Garrison Keeler says that Lutherans are not first-class people. It's just because of our attitude. He suggests that when his cast of people from Minnesota went to New York City, they flew on Lutheran, Lutheran air. The No Frills Airline, you're all in the same boat on Lutheran Air, where flying is an uplifting experience. There is no first class. Meals are potluck, and he goes on. <laughs> well, all, all, frees, all fees are fair wet, free will. All fares are by free will offering, and the plane will not land until the budget is met. Jesus was invited for lunch, and they were watching him. He had already healed, we learned last week, a woman who uh, had a bent over back. He healed her at the synagogue on sat the Sabbath and upset people. He now is invited to the Pharisee's home, which is a pretty prestigious uh, moment 
for lunch, and he can't help himself. On the way, he heals a man with dropsy. It's a man with edema. His, uh, he's retaining fluids. But Jesus heals him, which he shouldn't be doing on the Sabbath, especially with everybody watching him. And he gets to the meal, and then we find Jesus is watching everyone else. And he said, now he's using that wisdom, conventional wisdom, that we saw in our lesson from Proverbs. I've been noticing how you're, you're sitting. You think that the one who is the most prestigious, the most wealthy, the most learned, gets the seat, the most prominent seat at the meal. He said, no, it'd be much wiser to take the humblest seat. And then if you're deemed worthy, you're asked to be brought forward. And then everyone will see. And then he uses that statement. The one who honors himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be honored. It's conventional wisdom. It's the way things work in the world. Humble yourself, be brought forward. Christians through the ages play those silly games, don't we, about uh, pecking order, and you can see it through the church in history, but you, uh, denominations play it. Well, our church is better than your church, right? Uh, back in the early, in the colonial days of the United States, we started, the churches started putting in pews. Most places people stood when they came to worship. But they put in pews. Pews is from a French word that means lifted up, raised up. And a pew was for the aristocrats who came. And they'd be ro roped off to keep away the riffraff who had to stand. After some time, by the way, don't you think that's very un-American? Just goes against not only religious principles, but American principles. And the church finally realized that that was insane and put, uh, let everyone sit on benches and they called them pews from then on. Then people could buy their pews and you could have them fenced off with a gate. You could decorate them as you wanted. You could put in armchairs if you wanted. Some people put in fireplaces, if you can imagine. Now they were first class people, weren't they? And Jesus says, no, you'll get your comeuppance. Humble yourself. And there's something about being in that humble position with the humble people that is very rewarding, Jesus says. Then he goes on. If you really want to be a first-class people person, watch who you invite. Uh, so he gives some invitation etiquette. By the way, I don't know if any of you ever watched the Big Bang Theory. I, I don't, but I, 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 I've seen it a couple of times. But there's this episode where Sheldon Cooper, that's Sheldon Cooper, he is having a discussion with Penny, his neighbor, across the hall. And it's Christmas time, and Penny said, I bought you and Leonard some silly neighbor gifts. And this is Sheldon's response. Wait, you bought me a present? Uh-huh, says Penny. Why would you do such a thing? Penny, I don't know. 
because it's Christmas. Then Sheldon says, Penny, now I know that you think that you are being generous. The foundation of gift giving is reciprocity. You haven't given me a gift, you've given me an obligation. So Penny says, that's okay, you don't have to give me anything in return. Sheldon, of course I do. The essence of the custom is that now, that I now have to go out and purchase for you a gift of commensurate value, representing the same perceived level of friendship as the gift that you have given me. Then he lets out a big sigh. No wonder suicide rates rise during the holidays. <laughs> He's talking about conventional wisdom here. It's the way a first-class person thinks. Oh, somebody gives me a gift. I better give them a gift. And it has to be of commensurate value. It has to be one that is on the level of our friendship and tells how I value the friendship. Jesus says instead, the kingdom of God, see what he's preparing us for? The kingdom of God, the big wedding feast that will have no end. Invite those who cannot reciprocate, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. You know what's interesting about those four people, those four types of people? They were not allowed in the synagogue. Jesus said, you want to be great in the kingdom of God, invite those people. Psychiatrist Robert Coles. He teaches at Harvard. He, he talks about the days he had graduated from college. He was now in medical school. So he went, uh, called up Dorothy Day's clinic. Dorothy Day, of course, is uh, the famous Catholic social worker who started what was called, um, founded Catholic Worker in the Catholic Worker movement, and she had a um, care center that was called a, a center for the homeless called Catholic Worker. So he called up and said, hey, I'm a medical student. He was very proud of his credentials. He thought of himself as Mr. First Class Person. I'd like to volunteer my services to the Catholic Worker. And they said, oh yeah, that's great. When can you come down? And he told him. So he came down, walks in, looks around a little bit, and immediately says to who he thought was in charge, I'm here to see Dorothy Day. Immediately goes to the top. Well, he's a first-class person, right? And they said, well, he, she's in the dining room. And he goes and stands, gets to the door of the dining room, and he's they point out Dorothy Day, and she's sitting at a table. And right across from the table is a homeless person. Dr. Cole immediately sees that this man is high on some dangerous substance. But he says, Dorothy Day is sitting there in rapt attention, listening to every word he says. Doesn't even know I'm standing in the doorway. I, Mr. First Class, am standing in the door doorway. Doesn't even recognize me. And after they talked a while, and it appeared the conversation was over, for the first time she looked around and saw me. And she stood up, he said, and looked at me, and she asked, would you like to, s oh, I didn't see you, would you like to speak with one of us? And he was flabbergasted. 
that she would put a poor homeless person on her level, a famous person. He said that encounter changed his life. The kingdom of God. Jesus doesn't want us to be embarrassed when we get to that mighty wedding banquet where there is no distinction between rich and poor, black or white, Republican or Democrat. You'll be surprised. Jesus is just preparing us now. And he says, let's act that way today. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious power, was crucified.
Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of grace, you hold out your invitation of fellowship to all in our community. Help us to live in mutual love for one another, not neglecting to show hospitality to strangers. Strengthen marriages, families, and friendships with mutual love and respect. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you for tables of abundant food. Bless crops, farms, and industries that as co-creators with you, we may provide responsibly from the earth for the sake of all. Lord, in your mercy. Break the bonds of captivity and injustice. Work in leaders and nations to bring peace and to advocate for the least of these. Especially we pray for the people of Louisiana, where severe flooding has been responsible for deaths and where more than 40,000 homes have been damaged. We pray for the more than 1,000 firefighters who are fighting numerous wildfires in California. We pray for Syria, where 250,000 people have already died in war. And we remember Italy as it recovers from an earthquake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heal and comfort those we hold in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. We remember especially Jim Allen, Cindy Anderson, Lael Biella, Bryce Bauer, Carolyn Callan, Dennis Chappell, Pam Cole, Dean Crane, Wayne DeLargy, Jeff Dykeman, Mark Henson, Dennis Hess, Janelle Joshwick, Carolyn Lohmeyer, Annabelle Moore, Jan Snath, Sean Snellen, Lucy Stilwell, Paul Thompson, Lawrence Tillotson, Linnea Ugla, Joyce Ugla, and Kathy Zinter. Are there any others? We give thanks for all those who have died in faith. We remember especially Sandy Drake and Tom Cobb. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, Trust in your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift you, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We had something happen this week that has never happened before that I can remember in the daycare and that we had three teachers that were ill and we scrambled and got uh, enough volunteers to keep our child care center open for a day but it occurred to me that we need a few more people that we can call so if you're willing to do that see me and we'll start a list. Lisa is going to make an announcement. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you here this morning. I'd like to call to your attention on page three of your messenger, consistent with today's theme about banquets and parties. Um, Sunday, September the 11th, is Rally Sunday, the, the day we begin Sunday school and continue on through with uh, celebrating the end of summer and the beginning of what we would call the school year. So the Parish Life Committee is going to host a potluck banquet that day at 1215. We're going to have baked ham and we will provide buns and beverages. So we're asking all of you to prepare a side or a salad or a dessert and come and join us that day. So. Whether you mark a calendar on the wall at home or you use a planner or a smartphone, the information for you to remember is in the messenger and we look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you, Lisa. We do have, uh, that would be a good time to mention God's Work Our Hands, our neighborhood outreach event for God work, God's Work Our Hands. It's going to help our neighbors clean up by having dumpsters here and we do have some trucks and trailers going out and picking up for those people who cannot get their debris here. So keep that in mind and uh, that's a three hour time, 9 to, to 12, so it's a good opportunity to, to volunteer. Also notice that this coming Wednesday Senior choir begins. The Wednesday after that, all of our musical groups begin. So keep that in mind. And there's some other things in there about Sunday morning classes, as well as this about uh, from the Evangelism Committee going over the book, The Irresistible Church. I think I'm done. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
I forgot to mention that we are visited this morning by a first-class person, the Reverend Jenny Jackson. Yeah. Please say hi to her. She offered to preach today, which I would have loved, <laughs> but her mother vetoed that. <laughs> I, I want her for myself. So anyway, say hi to Jenny. People couldn't say his last words. 